My name is Maria Nyaker and I've spent the last 15 years working with medical devices, clinical development and clinical evaluation. In fact, I teach a course called Introduction to Clinical Investigations of Medical Devices and the ISO 14155 standard. You can register for this course by going to Medical Device HQ or by clicking in the link below the video. If you're new here, subscribe to our channel and click on the button to receive a notification when we post a new video. We promise they're really good. In this video, we will look at how you can start and prepare a clinical investigation budget. It is very important to build a solid budget to convince stakeholders, like maybe your manager, a sponsor, or potential investors. You need to convince them of the project's feasibility, and I will show you some of the key cost parameters for your clinical research project and how you can plan this in an optimized way. We will be reviewing the cost drivers and how to build the clinical research budget. But you need to be mindful that there are differences in costs related to the clinical assessments and treatments in the different countries. This should also be considered when building a budget. I list here some of the cost drivers in a clinical research. If the research is financed by a sponsor, such as a medical device manufacturer, the hospital needs to be paid a patient fee, which is a compensation per enrolled subject. This is often one of the biggest costs. Let's look at what this is. This is an example spreadsheet that you can use to calculate the per patient fee per enrolled subject. The table is included below the video, so don't worry if you don't catch all the details as we go through the video. The per patient fee will, for example, include the cost of a doctor for performing an informed consent process or doing the baseline patient measurements or any procedural costs such as an MRI, CT scans or echography. As you can see, the per patient fee is normally split out over different visits of the study, such as baseline, discharge from the hospital, one month follow up, one year and annually. This gives you a total amount over the full course of the study for each type of activity. Some activities only occur once, like taking the informed consent, while several activities, such, such as imaging, may occur several times. As you can imagine, this fee can vary a lot, and it could be anything from a few hundred euros to several thousands of euros, depending on the study. The spreadsheet we looked at will allow you to accurately track and calculate the costs and, and prepare a per patient fee budget. The more patients you enroll in your study, the higher the total cost of the patient fees. There are also labor costs to compensate for the staff at the site, such as research nurses and doctors that are required to spend part of their working day on your clinical investigation. You have to account for all the staff at the site that are required to invest time their time is calculated and compensated in full-time equivalency, FTEs. In addition, there are also costs to cover any expenses associated with the site and various startup activities, such as startup fees to the ethics committee, scientific boards and committees, and the EDC, electronic data capture costs. These costs won't change much as a result of the number of subjects in the study, but instead they are affected by an increasing number of sites that you include in your study. So now I'm using a different spreadsheet to compare the one that was covering the patient cost. This spreadsheet now is also included below the video. The site and startup costs can be very high, as well as ethics committee fees and regulatory authority review fees. The cost will depend on which region and which country you're working with, and you will need to multiply this cost by the number of sites and the countries that you include in your study. You also need to include the scientific boards and committees and other consultation fees and safety monitoring board fees. You may also have to take into account the cost for the electronic data capture, the EDC system fee, and for developing the case report form and maintaining it. It may also be needed to have an independent laboratory, for example, an imaging analysis laboratory for radiographic imaging. This cost need also to be contemplated. The imaging core lab cost that is budgeted to analyze diagnostic imaging data is generally very high and also calculated per image analyzed. So imagine a study with 100 patients that each may have 10, 10 images analyzed over a period of five years, and each image is 500 euros to analyze. The imaging core lab cost alone can amount to 500,000 euros. Then you have the cost for monitoring activities that many times is outsourced to a clinical research organization. 
and part of the CRO cost also includes site selection visits, and this cost is multiplied by the number of sites you include in the study. The site initiation visit which also is, is a cost that multiplied by the number of sites you include in the study. And the monitoring visit, which is a cost that is multiplied by the number of visits per site that you plan to do in the study. And finally, the CRO costs often include a close-out visit to the site, which is again is a cost that's multiplied by the number of sites you include in the study. Another cost you may have to consider are costs related to the product, meaning you have to provide the device for free, and costs related to investigator meetings, protocol amendments, and ad hoc travel, for example. This gives you an overview of the main elements of a clinical study budget. Of course, you will need to include whatever specific costs that may be relevant for your product, your specific type of study, or the region where you're planning to do the study in. But this overview gives you an idea of what categories of costs you should include. I hope you found it helpful. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and see you soon again.